I'm here with Jim Sandberg, and he flew this YF-23 behind us. Can you tell us what it was like to fly? You flew the first flight in this. I flew the first flight on this particular airplane. Paul Metz flew the first flight on another YF-23, and then uh, I had the opportunity to fly that other airplane before I flew this one. So this was a particularly actual first flight because this airplane was flown with General Electric engines. The first YF-23 flew with a Pratt & Whitney engine, so it had different, air, different engines, so therefore it was a first flight for the airplane-engine combination. Well, can we have a quick walk around? So I flew the first flight on this airplane, YF-23 prototype number two, on the 26th of October, just almost two months after Paul Metz flew the first flight on the first prototype. His airplane was powered with Pratt & Whitney engines, this airplane, that I like to call my airplane, was flown with the General Electric engine. So there are significantly different engines, and so it was a valid, real, actual first flight of this airplane and engine combination. So on that 26th day of October, the team all gathered together, and we went out and got ready to go fly. Uh, when we did the takeoff, uh, one of the things that I learned when I was a young pup working for Northrop, Daryl Cornell, rest in peace, our chief test pilot at the time, was teaching me about how to test airplanes when they came out of the factory, brand new airplanes, the first flight. And he said, I always want to make sure, as soon as you get in the air, that the landing gear work. So raise them up and put them back down, and if everything's good, then you can raise them up, and then you can go flying for an hour and a half and do all the other tests necessary, not have to worry about whether or not you'll be able to land. So we did the first flight on this airplane, and soon after we took off, we raised the landing gear. Everything worked normally. All came up good. The control room was looking at the instrumentation, and they gave me the go-ahead to lower the landing gear. Paul Metz was on my wing in an F-15 chase airplane, and he was watching to make sure everything looked good. So I put my hand on the handle and lowered the handle, and this nose gear came down just like you see it now, just like it should. But the main gear never came out of the hole. The doors didn't even open up. It was as no, nothing had happened. So I was out there flying around with no, no main gear, but only with this nose gear down. Paul Metz was my chase pilot at the time, and he said something like, uh-oh, but I think it was something more, more d demonstrative. Some people had asked me, well, did you do anything different the second time than the first time? He said, well, we never really talked about it, but I'd up to that time probably flown about 47 different kinds of airplanes and many of those airplanes had landing gear malfunction problems that would say, well, if you couldn't get the landing gear to come down, maybe you could increase the G or decrease the G. So I will say that at the time when I lowered the gear this time, I kind of let the push forward a little bit on the stick to make it just a little bit lighter and lowered the gear. Maybe that helped. So we left the gear down, brought the airplane down for a safe landing, and could safely completed the first flight because the primary objective of a first flight is to take off and land. Anything else is just icing on the cake. Now we took it back in, they inspected the airplane, they found that there was a malfunction in the manufacturer when they put pieces together. They put the wrong piece in some place and that's why the gear didn't work properly all the time. And they fixed that problem and the airplane went on to fly for another 22 flights, I think, after that. So the purpose of a pilot's walk around is to do a final quality check of the condition of the airplane before we go flying. On the case of professional flight test organizations like Northrop, I've got Mike Foxgrover was the chief, uh, the crew chief for this airplane, and Mike knows every inside and out part of this airplane. An extraordinary combination of mechanic, electrician, hydraulic expert, logistician, and uh, scrounger. He knows everything about it and how to make it work. So when I come out and uh, see the airplane, get ready to go fly, the first thing I want to do is talk with my crew chief and say, Dave, Mike, I'm sorry, Mike, how's it look? And he says, it's all ready to go. After that, the rest is pretty much pro forma. But I want to walk around and uh, familiarize myself with the airplane and also show Mike that I'm really interested in it. And also every once in a while, we'll find something that we didn't see before. Now, 
most walk arounds usually start around this part because this is where you end up at the end fitting into the airplane. Looking around the part of the airplane, mostly in the nose gear, I want to go down and look at the condition of the oleo struts, make sure that it's a proper extension here, that it's been serviced properly, that the tire looks like it's uh, uh, got the proper inflation, that it hasn't been rotated. Inside here, looking up, want to take a look and make sure that the wires and pulleys all appear to be in the right position and the up locks and the connectors and the safety pins are either in place or out depending on what is the requirement on that airplane and that there aren't any hydraulic leaks. Then we're going to come on up and take a look at the air data system. Whatever airplane is a little bit different but on this airplane we use the total temperature probe and the air data system. It's got lots of little holes on it. You want to make sure that there isn't any dust or dirt in there. And of course then that these safety devices are removed as we go around. Come up to the nose and looking at the condition of the radome. And here at the very tip of the nose is the uh, total pressure port. You want to make sure once again that there isn't any wasps that got stuck in there while we we're looking around. Now one of the things that's important as you do a walk around, you, if you're, particularly if you're in the military or working for a military customer, pilots usually have a checklist that they're looking at to make sure that they're checking everything on the checklist. I didn't have bring along my checklist today so I'm faking it. But you usually have the checklist and so you'd always, even the pilots would get in the habit of as I came around the nose, that's the time when I have to turn the page on the checklist. I'm not losing it looking at the checklist because I know what I want to see on it and I already told you that Mike or that uh, Mike Foxgrover had already looked this thing over carefully. But here again, the same type of things, the fasteners are connected, the general condition, the uh, pitot tubes are good, that the doors are attached and they're not wiggling too much. Sometimes they're supposed to wiggle and they got to just wiggle just the right amount. The inlet is where it gets really interesting in most airplanes. But in this airplane, in the YF-23, it has a sinusoidal duct, so you can't actually see the face of the engine uh, because it's hidden, and that primarily helps with the stealth characteristics of the airplane. But I can look inside the inlet, make sure there's not any uh, obstructions in there or maybe uh, something that was left in there like an extra tool. I'm going to look a lot at this bleed air system up here because there's lots of little holes up here and this is how the supersonic shock is controlled as it goes in the inlet. So we want to pay attention to all of these little inlet perforations up here to make sure that there aren't any obstructions. This is the way that the airplane controls the sh supersonic shock of the air going into the inlet. So we want to look at the landing gear and make sure everything is uh, clean. It's not, uh, it doesn't have any hydraulic leaks on it. It appears as though the brakes are properly functioned, that the tires have enough tread, like you would on your car, but it's a little bit more important. General condition of the doors and the whole general area up there in front to make sure that it's nothing that obvious that sticks out that might be wrong. As we move along the leading edge of the wing, we want to inspect it for it to make sure there's not any dings or cracks or protrusions on it. At very high angle of attack, the design of this uh, wing is at the, at the tip is very critical, so anything that might have been a, a rock hit it or anything, we want to make sure that that was not there. As we move along the trailing edge of the wing, we want to make sure that the trailing edge devices, the ailerons and the flapperons are in the proper position. Sometimes you push against them to see that they have a little bit of play if they're allowed to. Every airplane is different. There's no play on this particular airplane because you can see it's bolted together because it's a static display. As we come around the rear of the airplane, we can see a good image of the vertical tails and see that they're their general condition. And then also as we look down into the exhaust to make sure that here we can see the rear end of the engine and make sure that the engine itself looks good as well as the parts of the exhaust system and the exit exhaust that there aren't any malfunctions here. And since the airplane has bilateral symmetry it's the same on the right as it is on the left so I'll look at all the same places on the left as I go around the airplane as I did on the right. Jim thank you for giving a walk around from a pilot's perspective. Well thank you very much Betty. Uh, I want to tell you that this is a different kind of a walk around because we're talking about a walk around of an airplane before a uh, experimental test flight with a large team of experts and professionals that are supporting us with going on along. But every pilot that flies any airplane always will, does a walk around on his airplane. If he's in the airlines, he'd be doing it with a mechanic at his side. If he's doing it on his own airplane, he's still going to look at everything carefully, sometimes a little bit more carefully than we did here 
because nobody has been looking at the airplane before. So happy flying. <laughs>